Programming in Rust is a lot like visiting a dominatrix. At first, things are going to be really difficult, maybe even a bit painful. You'll get bound up by the different types of strings that exist, and the compiler will continue to punish you until you use the right safe words. But once you get used to all this, you'll quickly realize that it was all really enjoyable. You'll look back on these experiences with fondness and consider them to be some of the best times of your life. Maybe you'll even tell your grandkids about it. Today, I'm going to show you how to get through that early Rust pain just a little bit easier and make you an overall more productive Rust programmer with Rustation Vim for NeoVim. This is a modified fork of rusttools.nvim, which, as you can see, was archived at the beginning of 2024. Now, if you're using Rust tools in NeoVim already, things might still be working for you right now. But this plugin is no longer actively maintained, and eventually it's going to stop working when some kind of breaking change is finally made to NeoVim or some other plugin that you're using which Rust Tools needs to hook into. Rustation Vim also has fewer dependencies than NeoVim's Rust Tools plugin. We can see right here that for its most basic configuration, it doesn't even have a dependency on LSP config. Now, one thing that you do need to have installed, one of the prerequisites is Rust Analyzer. In fact, I think this is pretty much a prerequisite for just about any Rust plugin that you would use within NeoVim. Now, Rust Analyzer can be installed with Mason. This is a really great package manager for different LSPs, DAP servers, linters, and more. But if you've already installed Rust Analyzer to your system with Rust Up, then you can add this path equals append argument to your Mason setup which is going to tell Mason to prioritize your systems package over Mason's. Now, I'm gonna be doing this Rustation Vim configuration in NVChad, but everything should work on any other NeoVim config, at least as long as you have Lazy or some other package manager installed, because as you can see here, Rustation Vim can be installed with rocks, or lazy, this is what I'm gonna be using for the tutorial. Oh, and one more quick, just general organizational tip. If you're planning on installing a bunch of different plugins into NeoVim, then you might wanna break those configurations into individual files instead of putting everything inside of the init.lua file. Whenever you do decide to do that, you can cut out the code blocks from init.lua for your different plugins, and then just create a new Lua file within the same plugins directory and put a return statement before the code block. And of course, you have to make sure that the last closing curly brace at the end of the file doesn't have a comma after it. Okay, so we're here inside of the file tree of my NVim configuration. We want to go into Lua plugins init.lua. Now these first two plugins are ones that just ship with the NVChad configuration. Um, so you don't have to pay attention to the LSP config or conform.nvim right now. Um, you also don't have to pay any attention to tree sitter. So let's go ahead and add in Mason, which is really, really easy for a basic Mason configuration. This is all you need. So we've got this put in now, and we just got to add a comma at the end, write it to our file. And now that we have Mason configured, we can use it to start installing some LSPs. So if you do Mason install Rust tools, or excuse me, I'm supposed to do Rust analyzer. Mason install Rust analyzer. So you can see that it just installed it. I actually had it installed already. Um, and you might wanna take this opportunity to browse through some of the different LSPs and dApps and stuff that Mason has to offer. Um, but anyway, uh, once you have Rust Analyzer configured, we can open up a 
Rust file. Um, you might have to reload NeoVim or just spawn a new instance of it to see this configuration in a Rust file. So let's do handler.rs. All right, so all these warnings and stuff um, coming up on the side. You might not see this if you're actually a good Rust programmer, but luckily for us, I suck. So there's gonna be all these warnings and stuff. Um, this is, these are warnings and um, even errors. I think there's some errors down here. Yeah, so this is what you would normally see inside of Cargo. Like when you go to Cargo Run or Cargo Build Your Project, those errors would show up in the cargo message inside of a separate window. Um, and, you know, Rust, um, Rust compiler is very helpful with the error messages, much more helpful than almost any other language. Um, but it's even more helpful to have those error messages showing up on the exact line to show you where you need to fix something within your IDE instead of having it inside of a separate window. So we get all of this just with Rust Analyzer. Okay, so now let's move on to the Rustation Vim configuration. At the very least, all you need to add are these three lines for Rustation Vim, but I highly recommend using this option here Rust analyzer, and then in a new block, cargo equals all features equal true. And this is going to give you features in cargo for it. Well, actually, let me just go ahead and show you what it does. So back inside of my Rust project, um, if I go to use a crate, like let's use Axum you get this pop-up window here that gives you information about the Axum crate. This is, I think, pretty much the same thing you would see if you went to, I think it's crates.io. So you have documentation about Axum right here in your IDE, and you can see that there's a whole lot of it. <laughs> All right, so you get this, and you're also getting the code completion, because you can see here, that it knows I'm talking about the Axum module um, even before I've typed out all of Axum up here. Okay, so we um, finish typing out Axum and then double colon. And now these are different, oh, didn't mean to do that. These are different, um, you know, for or, or structs rather, modules. These are all belonging to the Axum crate. There's a lot of other features that Restation Vim has to offer that I'm not showing off here because I don't have them configured yet. So definitely go and check out that plugins documentation, which I'm going to link in this video's description. So this combination of tools here can eliminate the need to have a bunch of different windows open while you're programming. When I'm writing code, or really when I'm debugging code on the desktop, my previous workflow would use up all three of my monitors. I would have documentation for a crate open on one screen, a terminal with my errors from cargo open on another screen, and then right in the middle, I would have my NeoVim here, <laughs> where I can go ahead and start making modifications to the code to fix all of these errors. But this setup here is so much comfier and it's also a lot more portable because obviously I can't take my three monitors with me everywhere I go. And now, even if I'm writing Rust code at home, I don't have to get a sore neck from looking back and forth between all these different monitors. So try it out for yourself. Let me know what you guys think about it or if you have any other tips for enhancing the Rust development experience. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and support my channel by shopping on my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like the Come and Find It hoodie or Little Damon t-shirt. 10% discount store-wide at checkout for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.